Where did this Agile come from? What is the history of Agile? So right from the first time immemorial, four, five, six thousand years that we know about, <clears throat> people have been getting work done. And to get work done, they had practices. These fellows had a whip. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it was a practice. Did it work? Yes, it worked. They built the pyramids. Did it last? No. There will be a Moses who suddenly says, oh, we'll, let's go. And they all left. <laughs> In one shot, the whole lot got out of the office and left. <laughs> it will happen because people don't respond well to that. Yeah? So, <clears throat> then of course there was Henry Ford. He changed the world a bit because he brought work to the people. Previously people used to go to the car and fit the car. Now he said, oh, uh, uh, wait a minute, you sit here with the screwdriver and the car will come. Next car. So it became more productive. So he got more work done. Yeah? And this went on <clears throat> through the early 1900s. And then there was this building in 1931. So do you know which one this is? Yeah, the Empire State Building in New York. So it was built in 1931. It had 102 floors. And when they built it, there was only elevator technology to go up 20 floors, not more, only 20. And there was no space around the building. There was only space for one day's material. So, how long do you think it took to build this building? And if you know, you shouldn't say. <laughs> how long? <clears throat> Twelve years. Okay, we're looking there. Yeah? How long? Somewhere there? Five years, maybe? Yeah? It took nine months. Thirteen months it was finished. Is that even possible? Yes, it is. And how did he do it? He came in, he bought the land, and he said one thing. I want the tallest building in the world, and I want to be number one. He pulled in the team, the builders, the architects, the town planners, the logistics, the truck people, the material supplies. He sat them in the room, he locked the door, and he said, I want to be the first. The Chrysler building was coming up next door, already half finished. He said, I want it first, now you go figure out how, and he left it to them. That was it, and he walked out. In two weeks, they had the architectural drawing for the building, they started digging, and nine months later done. So people say, oh, was that agile? Of course it was agile. And guess what they did? They did every single one of this. They did not know what the lifts would do when they were building and digging the, the foundation. They iterated through. They made mistakes. And some of them were expensive mistakes, but they got there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, it's not very new. <clears throat> Around 1956, Herbert Benning started writing the first way to build software. How do you build software? Ah, okay. So Bennington said, oh, you've got to do this, and then do this, and then do this. He didn't call it waterfall, but he talked about specification, design, build, test. He wrote a paper on it. <clears throat> And in 1970, Dr. Winston Royce wrote the first sort of formal paper that he published on how to do software, how to build software. And guess where he copied that from? Most of it was copied from the engineering world. And if you made a change in this phase, because of the old way computers were, it was very expensive to make the change, because you had to go back and change a lot. So what did he say? Aha, when you write the specifications, I want you to put your signature. I won't change my mind. Then you do the design, ah, put your signature. Now you do the build, put your signature. So everybody was being forced to commit 100%. Now imagine how difficult it is to change. So that's waterfall. And then we went along the way and it didn't work and people said, hmm, this is too slow. So around the 80s, they started doing rapid application development, saying, taking the same bit, and Dr. Vincent Royce wrote two parts of the paper. The first part was this part. The second part, he said, you have to collaborate and you have to iterate. But the US military took it, the finance departments who had the computers took it, and they said, oh, forget about that soft stuff, you know, it's all rubbish, you just do it and sign. And they forgot about collaborating, they forgot about iterating, they forgot got about learning. So these people started copying it, actually. They started looking and <clears throat> doing things. XP, Crystal, Scrum, DSDM, 90, 95. In 2000, all these people got together in Utah and they said, we're all meaning the same things. Why don't we give it a name? 
And there are two names. The first name was iterative, I believe. And they chose the second name, which was agile, which was not, uh, let's say, <coughs> it was a better name. It, it, it stood for speed and iterativeness and everything else. So that's how agile was born. Is it new? Of course it's not. You did it naturally. Without me telling you anything, you did this. A lot of you may be saying, yeah, sometimes I work like that. I use this with my kids. I have a little wall and they can move things, they can have things, and you can go through. We do it in schools, in hospitals, in different areas. <clears throat> now, from 2000 till 2015, Agile has gone through a massive transformation. Yeah? So they have absorbed and we have absorbed all sorts of learning from lean, from design thinking, from neuroscience. They've pulled in all the practices. So what is the condition for taking a practice and making it an agile practice? What do you think is the criteria? <clears throat> when can you say that practice design thinking is using? Oh, that's a nice practice. Let me borrow it. If it meets the values and principles, you can use it for Agile. Doesn't it make sense? So everything, you will see, this, we've got 70 or 80 practices now that you can use for your work. And you can invent your own. Shuhari. Yeah? So that is the history of Agile. 